My uh, my editing didn't work so well. Let me fix that. We are live though. Uh, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna fix this. If you go to uh, YouTube or or yeah, I can see. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's not working so well. Let me let me get this fixed here. Yep. Um. No. Why? Why? Please. Why are you doing this? No. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to try this all over again. Reset the transform. Now you're going to be, there you are. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's crop it. I don't, they, they make this so difficult, honestly, like mm -hmm. everything is like you, 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 when you're trying to do this, it's like very finicky and things will get stuck and it just, it's so, I, I don't know. Let's see here. Let's try like. 50, 50. This is, you know, it wouldn't be a Jamin stream without something like this happening. So, all right. No, too much. 50. No, let's try 80. I'm going to narrate this for everybody because why not? 100, 100. It's closer. That's closer. And then now I can move it to the right spot, hopefully. Make it a little bigger. Yeah, right. Why is it squished? I don't know why it's squished. I need to fix that. That's not right either. I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's so strange. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're very close, though. I'll get this. I'll get this. That's okay. <laughs> um... Welcome to the stream, by the way. Thanks so much for jumping in. Thanks. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. 120, 120 maybe? Let's see, I'm, I'm trying to log into Twitch uh, at the same time here, so. Yeah. Because that's. Mm -hmm. Hey, Uger. I can see that. <laughs> Are you able to see? It's pretty close. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna call it good. Hey Uger. Yeah. Hey Derek. Derek says hey Jamin and Christian. Uh, Ahmed says there's something called T3GG. I know. I'm gonna actually have the creator of T3GG on my stream. Theo. He's gonna be joining us. So little little sneak peek. That's gonna ha be happening. Um. Jose. Ahmed says, I think it's better for cases where you have guests on stream. I know. In fact, we're going to actually try it when he comes on. So that's going to be fun. Sushant, uh, how are you doing there? We've got some, some, a lot more uh, kind of YouTube oriented. Anyway, happy Friday to you and to everybody on, on the chat. Sorry about all the technical difficulties. I guess we're going to let people stream in here, filter in here. Um, I'm super excited to have Christian on my on my stream here. This is this is fun stuff. We uh, we connected. Uh, I reached out to him because he is one of the one of the developers who has worked on React Native Skia. Is that how you pronounce it, or how do you pronounce Skia? I think we just say Skia, but Skia. that might be wrong. I'm not sure. I think um, think actually that uh, it's. I think it's called Skia. I think that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, th that'll yeah. work for. That'll work for me. Um, and Skia itself, actually, before we get into that, do you mind uh, kind of introducing yourself? You live in Oslo, right? That's right. I live in Oslo, Norway, uh, and I work in Oslo, Norway. Uh, I run my own small agency with, uh, we are actually just two, two guys okay. uh, making apps, and we have been doing this for a few years now. So my background is uh, basically I've been doing development since I was 11 years old. And as you can see, I'm a bit older than 11 <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> so I have a few years uh, behind me. I have done a lot of things. I started um, creating development tools for, I don't know if you even remember, but there was something called the Palm Pilot back in the days. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is awesome yeah <laughs> oh yeah so we we i had a company where we created development tools for uh for palm um, that's amazing so that was kind of my yeah it was really cool okay tell really me fun to, tell me yeah. about palm development like what what language were you writing in and stuff like that 
it was basically C. Really? Not even C++. plus <laughs> plus. Yeah. Really? And did you yeah. know C before that or did you have to learn it to kind of do that? No, I, I knew C. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I knew the language, but um, the problem was that when we started, you either had to buy a tool from Metroworks okay. called Warrior, which was kind of good, but it was Mac based. Okay. So what we did was that we created uh, these tools, basically modeled on Visual Studio, mm -hmm. uh, where you could edit C and write your programs in C, build them, debug them. You could even design your user interface uh, in the tool. So it was kind of a uh, bit point and click so we could double click on buttons to create event callbacks etc so it was that's uh, cool. yeah it was really cool absolutely so that was fun yeah that's awesome um <clears throat> yeah i mean my dad had a palm pilot back in the day um and uh you know like that was that was a pretty big deal for him because he could he had a small business he was like a he, he had an excavation company and so mm -hmm. he had a way to kind of keep his calendar in there and different things like that. He never really kind of used that to its full potential, but he, you know, he really kind of wanted to, he wanted to kind of like, you know, uh, see, see what he could make happen with it. And that's, that's interesting. I didn't actually realize that there were third party apps for it though. Oh, there was, there were so many, there were so many yeah. popular games and apps and everything. So mm -hmm. yeah, you had, had almost everything you could dream of on, on those little machines. <laughs> that's super cool <laughs> but but i mean the, the fun thing that got me inter interested into this uh, area of mobile devices was kind of the limitations you have you have this small yeah. device the small screen you have a slow processor you have yeah. uh, lack of storage everything is limited mm -hmm. so you really need to kind of uh yeah spend your resources wisely constraints so that kind of yeah yep. constraints breed creativity and that's that's a fun yep. It's a fun place to be in for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really enjoyed it. So so then I just actually my my, my role into iPhone development back yeah. in two thousand and eight was actually because I won a Mac MacBook Air in a really? competition. Really? Yeah. So yeah, because I was a Windows guy and did all my development on, yeah. on Windows and yeah. then I there was this stupid SMS, you know, text message competition where yeah. you had to answer something and uh, i was lucky and won <laughs> and was awarded the, the macbook air so yeah and then i started doing iphone development and i've kind of been doing iphone and android development since then yeah so that's that's interesting stuff i uh catching up with chat here really quick um ahmed uh was talking about t3gg where there's guests um uh, Ahmed says, how's it going, Jamin and Christian? It's going really well for me, for sure. Um, Same here. <laughs> uh, Ali says, uh, uh, waves, and uh, Ahmed says, C is really fun. Ahmed is the same age as my son. He's he's uh, 17, uh, over in Egypt. Fantastic developer. Rizwan says, hi, Jamin. Hi, uh, Christian. Jamin, you push the stream so late at my time zone. Always enjoy all the streams. I know, I know. You know I would love to do it probably earlier, um, but I have to get my kids off to school and uh, that kind of gets in the way. I might at some point move it up to like 9 a.m. my time, which would be a, an hour earlier. That would probably be a little bit easier for the, those of you in Europe and and uh, the Middle East. And I, I don't know if you're, I forget Rizwan where you are. Um, if you're in India, that might be tough, um, but I forget exactly where you are. Uh, Chen Man uh says hey christian how much of your earlier c experience have you been able to use with react native skia actually quite a lot because we build a lot of this code using uh, c plus plus so that's probably something that we will get back to during the yeah. talk today or in the stream so yeah really uh really used it a lot that's yeah that's the, I, I i one of the things i love about the react native community is that it's this mashup of like different coding communities. And mm -hmm. that's another example of it because there's just all these different, you know, there's web developers, there's mobile developers, there's uh, C plus plus developers. There's, you know, like you can kind of like take a gamut of different, the cross section of, of everything and you, you kind of have them all. It can cause some conflict as well, but it also causes some, 
really kind of good collisions that all these different interesting ideas come in. Um, yeah, that's... totally agree. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is that you will be able to write in Java, C, Kotlin, Swift, um, TypeScript, JavaScript. Yeah, it's the, the list is almost endless when you start doing <laughs> React Native development. development. <laughs> it can be a bit uh, uh, scary at first, but um, yeah. Uh, if Rizwan, you want to, you can do it. Yeah. Rizwan says he's from Pakistan. I, I knew that, but I forgot. I'm very sorry about that. I My, my memory isn't as good as... It used to be, or actually, I don't remember if it was better or not. Uh, Jamin, you look younger. Uh, is it anti-aging or TikTok lightning setup or Twitch as a filter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because I shaved. That's probably because I shaved. It, it could be that uh, the contrast between me, who are <laughs> basically a bit older than you and makes you well, look younger. So that's good. Well, how old are you? Because you, you mentioned you have a do- you have a set of daughters, uh, twin daughters that are 27? 26. 26. Mm, yeah. So I'm actually 50. You're 50. Okay. Same age yeah. as my, my business partner. I'm 40. Um, yeah. And my business partner, Todd, is 50. Uh, he's been doing, you know, development for many years. Um, Darren says hi. Uh, Achmed says, I maintain some React Native Native mo- React Native native modules that I want to make sure they work well with the new architecture, but I can't really find any good resources to help me do that. Ahmed, um, <clears throat> stay tuned. Uh, there are some things in the works that will be changing that. I can't say much more, but we are involved in that a little bit. So it's going to be, it's going to be changing. Akil, hey, Akil. So we have people coming in saying hi, hanging out with us. Um, Let's talk a little bit about React Native Skia. So Skia itself is the, would you call it a render or what would you call it? It's, it's some sort of an engine. Yeah, it's it's the graphics engine uh, powering Android, Chrome. Um, a lot of stuff uses Skia today. So it's basically a 2D drawing library that can target different platforms. So you can either use it to create images, bitmaps, or you can use it to render things directly on the GPU, on the device you're on. So it's Mm -hmm. uh, written in a very portable way. So it's possible to use it on different platforms. Um, And it's also, of course, powering Flutter, which is uh, something we might touch into today as well. Totally. Yep. Uh, So let me ask you a dumb question. Um, What would be sort of the difference between that and something like OpenGL? Yeah, so so uh, Skia uses OpenGL. So OpenGL is one of the targets that we can use, and we actually use OpenGL on Android when we're rendering stuff with Skia. Okay. okay. So yeah, so on iOS we're using Metal, which is the yep. preferred uh, yep. hardware accelerated. Uh, layer. So you're and an abstraction Android, above that. OpenGL. Or yeah. that, sorry, mm-hmm. Skia is an abstraction above that. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, Metal, and then. Uh, uh, there might be some others as well, I assume, uh, besides yeah. OpenGL and, and Metal. Yeah, I think um, Skia supports OpenGL, of course. It supports Metal on iOS. It supports uh, software rendering as well on okay. the CPU. And it supports Vulkan, which is also an option on Android. We haven't started yeah. exploring that because OpenGL yeah. is working so well on Android. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Robin says hi. Robin works for me. Um an MCA Jung, but um, I'm not sure what your name is there, but uh, hello, Christian and Jamin. Greetings from Ghana. I've been following William and Christian on the Skia journey. Awesome work. The nesting in Skia is counterintuitive, though, coming from a web background. The nesting. Hmm, interesting. Wonder what the. We can uh, try to touch up on oh, if he thinks about the. Uh... The way we build graphics or draw graphics using React components with nested components inside yep. each other, we can touch up on that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good mm-hmm. one uh, because there will be a lot of people with web backgrounds kind of watching what we're doing here. Yeah. So that'll be cool. All right. Well, uh, let me see here. Um, so React Native Skit obviously brings that to React Native. Um, and it allows you to kind of pick and choose you want a component that ha- is rendered using Skia. Um, and so where generally do you see it? Like, is, is this some, something where like um, you might have like a chart or a graph or something that you might want to show 
is it more animation focused is it kind of like would it be i don't know like where do you kind of see this as fitting into the ecosystem yeah i think uh if you think about it as 2d drawing so yep. whenever you want to do 2d drawing you mm -hmm. can use Kia. okay uh meaning that you could use it for charts if you yep. want to and, and a lot of stuff related to charts and you can also use it for animations like uh, onboarding animations or logo animations yeah. or some some other type of animation um it is also possible to build simple user interfaces with ski out today because we have support for touch handling and oh, animations okay. and everything yeah so we'll look into that as well uh, mm -hmm. So kind of everything is possible, but one thing is that we didn't want to start to uh, or, or to try to replace uh, the native uh, components that you're used to when you're doing yeah. React Native development. So you, you will still be using buttons and views and, yeah. and all of that stuff. But mm -hmm. the, the nice thing here is that you can make, mix and match. So if you want yeah. a screen uh, with both some but native buttons and some input fields and then some small icons or graphics, then you could use Skia and put it in just like a regular react native components yeah that so makes sense. that's kind of the idea 2d drawing whatever for wherever you want right um that no that that totally makes sense um let's see here just making sure i'm uh cody says really interested in using skia whoops sorry my my windows are all messed up here fixing. Okay, uh, interested in using Ski in a new Expo project I just started. Is it possible to use with the latest Expo SDK? So uh, we are still not part of the SDK since we are in alpha, but we're working closely with Expo to make sure that we will when we are kind of stable enough that this won't pose a problem for their uh, compatibility uh, backwards and forwards. We will be try to, to solve this so that we will be able to offer Ski as part of the SDK. Yeah, that's cool. In some uh, kind of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, that'll be a, that'll be a, a pretty big deal when it comes to Expo for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So answer, I guess, is not yet, but it's coming, Cody. Yeah, it is, and the, and the reason for not yet is basically just because we are in alpha and we don't yeah. want to uh, post or introduce big changes that will make uh, give give the Expo guys problems yeah. with uh, compatibility. So so that's basically why. Yep. But it should be possible. I, I'm unfortunately I'm not using Expo. I should probably be. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not so uh, not that much. So I'm I'm not that. Um, I don't know too much about this. But uh, there should be po some possibilities to use it with Expo today as well. But maybe not in the developer client like uh, in the snacks uh, stuff and, and so on. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Um... Sid uh, asks, "How is this? How is uh, React Native Skia different from Lottie? Have you used Lottie?" Ah, yeah, I have. That's a good question. So, so Lottie is basically just a way to move stuff from After Effects animations yep. into uh, some kind of serialized format that is deployed using JSON data, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then you have Lottie players on iOS and Android, and for web and for Mac OS, Windows, etc. So there are multiple uh, Lottie players actually. So Skia even has its own Lottie player. So Skia mm. is able to play Lottie files. Is that right? So, That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. We was just uh, we we haven't uh, I think uh, decided if we should include it because we are a bit aware of the file sizes and what we put into the binaries. But uh, Skia also offers uh, Lottie support if if you want to. That's so uh, Lottie is basically for, basically a player for those JSON files coming mm -hmm. from After Effects. Uh, but when that is said, uh, I think Skia in React Native, as we have it now, would fit nicely to kind of replace simple animations built with uh, built as Lottie files. Because say you want some simple spinners or some simple animations, uh, I think Skia would fit really well yeah. uh, as it is today. That's that's awesome. Uh, Chan Man says, "What's the biggest misunderstanding of React Native Skia that you see?" That's a great question. What's the biggest misunderstanding? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I think um, we have had some questions uh, of how to build like uh, complete user interfaces using React Native Skia. So, uh, someone believes that you can replace 
uh, the native components and the native views and should use Skia instead, just like Flutter does. Yeah. So that's kind of a misunderstanding because we 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 think you should use the regular system in React Native for building a reg regular use views and yeah. then use uh, Skia for two D drawing. I think that's a good answer. Um, but like when I think of Skia, I'm thinking, ooh, this would be kind of fun to make a game in, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of fluid. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I once actually one of the demos that I posted on Twitter was uh, you know the old Atari game Breakout. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I made a small clone of that and posted on Twitter using Skia yeah. in React Native uh, with fluid graphics and, and everything. So it should be possible. And um, uh, Skia also supports uh, shaders, so okay. you can actually write shader code that's code running directly in parallel <laughs> on the GPU. Uh, and that's really that's awesome. That means yeah. that you can render almost anything you want, actually, if you are capable of writing shader code. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Could, can you do 3D graphics? You said it's 2D renderer, but... Yeah, we can do 3D graphics. So I have some examples that I've prepared that we can take a look Ooh. at. They're really simple and small, so we can look at them later today and see yeah. see some of the possibilities. Um, I won't start explaining what the code is doing, <laughs> but it's, uh, I can say something about uh, how it works. Uh, That's amazing. So that should be possible, and I'm always dreaming of uh, having some time to to create one of those small games again because it's such fun. Oh, man. Yeah. Such good fun. I love making little games like that. That's just the best. Yeah. In fact, I want to do it some of that. Best. Like actually spend, you know, 10 of these sessions just building a little game or something. That would be really fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would be awesome. <laughs> well, maybe you'll have to join me for that. That would be really cool. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I do have to point out it is – Christian's uh, Friday evening, so he is sacrificing quite a lot to come on this this stream. I really appreciate it. Um, by the way, I'm half Norwegian. I told uh, Christian this before, but I am half Norwegian, so I'm half Finnish, half Norwegian, and uh, so yeah, we're we're uh, sort of connected at, at some level there. Um, cool. Well, I am going to. Oh, we got uh, Ski is very promising, says uh, Ahmed. And then uh, Alvaro says, thank you. I don't fully understand the sentence. It serves as the graphics engine for Google Chrome and Chrome OS, Android Flutter, and many other products. Please explain a bit. Thanks in advance. Yeah, we'll try to say a few words about that. So mm -hmm. when if you write code in Java and you write create some kind of drawable object where you can draw a rectangle or a circle and color it with a red color, then if you look at those Java uh, statements that you write, they are almost directly transferable to C and Skia calls. So it's basically the same thing. And if you look at the Android source code, all these primitives you use for drawing in Android are actually wrappers around C objects and C++ code going directly into Skia. So the Skia library drives uh, the rendering on Android. That's awesome. And we get all that goodness in React Native now. Oh, I have a question also. Um, so there's an imperative and a declarative API. So the declarative one uses JSX and you kind of like, you know, like write out the structure and whatnot. Um, the imperative is much more like you have an on draw function and you just tell it to draw stuff. Um, yeah. Is that using like JSI to do concurrent, or I mean, uh, uh, um, Synchronous um, calls uh, so that you're not having to wait for the bridge. Yeah. Okay. That was a question. I, I didn't yeah. get it. Sorry. Sorry. Off. Yes. Uh, is that is that sort of like you're using JSI in the background? Because uh, obviously waiting for the bridge is going to like slow it way down. But you're not doing that, right? No, we're not using the bridge at all. So we are kind of uh, using the new systems in in React Native where you have a very, very small Java uh, C++ interface where yeah. you can talk to the JavaScript engines. Yeah. And as I'm saying engines because you use the same layer to talk to Hermes or JavaScript core or the JavaScript core on Android. So mm -hmm. you use basically the same code on all, all platforms and all JavaScript engines, right. I think V8 as well. So um, so that's correct, yeah. Because it's a con JSI is a common thing then? Uh, across them. Yeah, JSI means JavaScript interface. Yep. So it's, uh, I think, something Facebook has created to be able to have a common interface between yeah. the JavaScript engines. 
but it's it's actually really cool because it means that I can write in C++ an object uh, which I can expose directly to JavaScript. So yeah. whenever you call my print method in the object, you will actually be running C++ code natively or, of yeah. course, compiled machine sure. code directly. Yeah. That's awesome. Cody says, what's the timeline for Skia? I assume uh, React Native Skia moving to beta and then 1.0. Yeah, so the plan here is, uh, first of all, we want to make sure that we have a stable API. So we've decided on using the same API as Skia uses on web, which is called Canvas Kit. Mm -hmm. It resembles uh, the Canvas context in HTML, but it's a little bit different, but it's, it's an API. And there are also pre-built binaries for uh, Vasm, uh, web assemblies, uh, for uh, using Skia in the browser. Okay. So our, our goal is to cover that API and we are getting closer and closer. And then we want to make sure that it is usable on the web as well. So React Native Web will be uh, uh, having access to React Native Skia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we think we are starting to get ready to go into production, but we will do this incrementally, meaning that we will uh, try to fix bugs and try to extend the APIs and release, and we will get more and more mature and maybe we will bump some of the minor version numbers up a bit just to signal that now we are getting closer awesome so yeah meaning there is no Sounds date like... at the moment uh, yeah yeah, yeah. We, we have some some target and some milestones but it's that's the plan there's there's progress being made um we are going to get into coding here in a bit um but i don't mind having this q a uh it's there's great questions coming in from chat um Ahmed says, doesn't having a whole rendering engine in React Native affect the performance bundle size and stuff? Yeah, that's a really good question. So <laughs> the Skia binaries will add some weight to your uh, app. So you will probably increase your app size with four or five, six megabytes mm -hmm. when you add Skia. Okay. We're using uh, all the hopefully correct technologies on iOS and Android to make sure that we don't distribute uh, binaries that you don't need. So when you deploy your iOS app to the App Store, for example, it will be split into pieces and uh, the correct um, uh, platform architectures slices will be uh, the ones actually downloaded. So we're thinking about around five megabytes, maybe a little more. Uh, so we really hope that we will reach our targets. Uh, I don't remember exactly where we are at now. But this is kind of a bit similar to Samarine from Microsoft because they also have a wrappers uh, library around Skia. Yep. And they also have these issues with size and have accomplished some of so, something close to those numbers. So I think that will be our target as well. Uh, the performance, no, shouldn't be a big problem. I mean, uh, we can talk a bit about performance when we get into animations uh, because we are trying, we are working really hard to do this in, in a way that shouldn't affect the performance in your app. And what we're seeing is actually that if you try to do stuff like we did today with the S React Native SVG, for example, the package, uh, React Native Skia is much faster and is has a lot much, much more performance and is capable of doing a lot more on, especially on Android. So performance is a big issue, but we uh, we're trying to not uh, add <laughs> to to the burden with more demands. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> and uh, now you said that it's Ski is already powering like Android and stuff, right? Like, so wouldn't there already be Skia APIs on yeah. device? That's a, that's a good point. So wouldn't there all be libraries available? But um, that's unfortunately not true because oh. Android um, or Google doesn't want to to kind of tie down to a specific version of the API. So you have internal binaries for the Skia stuff in Android, and then you need to deploy your own libraries built so that you know what okay. version you get. Otherwise, you, you wouldn't know which version, which version you're uh... running against. I guess that's similar to like JavaScript core, how they were shipping a version of it just to make sure that they had the right version. Uh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Otherwise yeah, it'd be pretty it's, cool. it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see here. Akhmed says, when should you use SVG and when should you use Skia? Yeah, it depends a bit on what you're doing, but uh, we are offering support for SVG in Skia. So if you want to, you could render your SVGs in Skia with Skia. It's uh, a bit faster than using uh, 
the SVG library in React Native. Um, I know that wow. this library was recently just uh, moved so that the, it's starting to get some maintainers again because it has been kind of uh, right. maintained for a little while. But yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so so our goal is not necessarily to replace it, but what I mean, this is uh, William is the guru when it comes to graphics, right? William Campbell, yeah. who's my partner on this project. Yeah. So he knows so many things about graphics. I feel like I'm like five years old when I watch <laughs> what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> so he's what he's talking about is he wants to be able to. Uh, use the signs made in, for example, Figma or Sketch right. and use the primitives and methods and filters in those tools. Right. So that whenever a designer gives you a new design for a new app in React Native, you could identify where you need to build custom components and you should be able to use Skia in React Native to do that because we should support all of those uh, filters, all of those methods of building graphics uh, as found in those tools. Yep. So... I would believe that it would be much more much more easy for a developer to use going go from Figma and implement it in in Skia with our primitives than using, for example, SVG because SVG has a few issues with how it works yeah. today on React Native. Yeah. Cody so says. From, oh, yeah. go ahead. You oh. can. Yeah. No, oh, I'm done. I, <laughs> I need to stop from time to time. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> Uh, you're just dropping so much awesome knowledge here, Christian, that I hate to interrupt you. Um, great to hear, says Cody. I want to. I wanted to use it in my project, but was concerned about bugs. I was watching William's stream yesterday, coming across a few bugs he noted down. Yeah, I think I, I watched the stream as well, and I joined in as well in the end. And the bugs that he noticed was like bugs that I've never ever come across because <laughs> I don't do those advanced strange <laughs> things that he is doing. So yeah. I don't think they are too too big of an issue. William is the, of course, the, the biggest yeah. power user. <laughs> so yeah, he, yeah, he is uh, unbelievable. I'm yeah. learning so much. So uh, yeah, no, I, I would say that we are uh, starting to get quite uh, on top of uh, of the problems. We have some issues with the installations and, and compatibilities around the um, in Android, I know we, we just merged and released the test today with uh, support for the latest Gradle. So there are some issues. We, we don't have an NPM package yet, so you need to download it from the GitHub repo because of some issues with the NPM token that we're going to use with Shopify. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's uh, it should be doable. But the, I think the big issue with being an alpha is that we will take uh, every opportunity we can to refactor and do things better. Yeah. Yep, so that makes sense. For example, last Friday we released a whole new animation system, which changed a few things and bits and pieces around the code. And we will continue to change things. So yeah. that's why we're still saying it's alpha. You yep. should be know that this will happen and uh, yeah, be prepared. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chanman says or asks a question: How important do you think it is to be proficient in the native platforms and languages? Should I be proficient, or is it more of a library author's concern? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, so what I what I have been thinking all the time from when I started. I started doing React Native back in 2017, I think okay. 2018. Yep. So, um, and my experience is that. Uh, you should have someone being good at iOS and Android development when you start projects in React Native, or yeah. you should have access to those resources, right? But right. Uh, but then, if you have those as kind of the, the, the architects behind everything, people that know how to solve native issues, uh, there are so many things that uh, React developers can do in React Native and be productive and, and yeah. deliver a lot of uh, value to the to their clients. So. I would of course suggest that learn the platforms and be be right. good at iOS and Android, but I don't think you need to to be a good React Native developer. Yeah, um, I think I'm on board with the same thing. We've been doing it for quite a while. We did uh, native development before that, and um, so having some knowledge of Objective C and Java coming into it was helpful. Uh, but um, but I agree that that it makes sense to uh, you can you can be surprisingly productive as a React developer. You can do quite a lot. Um, 
in order to really be a React Native expert, I think you do need to have some level of understanding of what's happening under the hood and uh, at least the ability to read the code, uh, potentially, um, you know, write, write some code, uh, some native code. Notice that it is changing as well, of course, with the new architecture that's landing soon. Um, 0.68 will, will bring in a bunch of that. And then um, we're going to have, uh, there's going to be a lot more documentation and tutorials and all those things. Uh, so some of that will change. Um, and, uh, but yeah, uh, just bringing more capabilities uh, to the table and enabling some technologies like Skia uh, with, with uh, like the JSI. Um, so uh, Ahmed says transparent layout. This needs some backdrop blur. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, <laughs> Robin says uh, Skia has such a beautiful logo. I, I agree. It's, it's a great logo. Where, who, who made that logo? That's William, of course. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good story, actually, because in the first version, I created the splash screens and mm -hmm. icons. And he was like, mm, nice word, Christian, but uh, is it okay if I try to do something <laughs> a little bit different? <laughs> and I was like, of course, go ahead. Yeah. And he created this stunning, unbelievable, yeah. really nice logo. That's and a really nice our goal one. is, of course, to be able to animate that logo using Skia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That would be amazing. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Well, first off, why is this under Shopify? Just as a question. Yep, that's um, um, so. So when William and I started this, it was uh, William who came to me and asked for some advice. Where should he go? He had this idea of bringing Skia into React Native, and yeah. I was like, hmm, maybe you don't need to go go anywhere. Uh, you could go with me mm -hmm. uh, because I knew him a little bit from from previously. Uh, yeah. So we decided to create a prototype. Um, and then we started contacting people in the business that we know and asked for some funding and support for, for doing this project. And yep. Shopify stepped up and uh, helped us a lot here. So we are able to spend quite a lot of time on this project and they're really committed to, to us doing it. So it will be the developed in the future, it will be maintained. Uh, I think they have been, have been super, super good supporters for, for this project. That's really so, great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad Shopify, really, yeah. they, they've been fantastic uh, uh, yeah. addition to the React Native community. Absolutely. I mean, it's fantastic. And I, I really, really like this thing that's happening now that you have open source projects that you see the big value in the project and someone, <laughs> instead of just using it and demanding people to fix bugs all the time, they're actually giving something back and saying, hey, we can help fund this project and sponsor you. And, and that is an awesome change that has happened uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, year or two. Yeah. By the way, uh, Yakun, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, over on the Twitch side of things. Uh, Ahmed says, William isn't only a developer, he is an artist. Yeah, definitely a talented, talented guy. Um, he is. We have, uh, so let's just really quickly take a look here. Um, it is an alpha release. That's something to kind of point out here and I'm going to zoom in just a tad so people can see a little better um, it's uh, you're still working on it, it doesn't have full coverage uh, doesn't have, you know there's still bugs still things like that happening um, and then there's this installation thing and I actually went through this process myself now uh, now Christian and I were chatting a little bit beforehand and he said in the docs you might have you know 1.04 or 1.05 uh, he did just release one 0 0.1 Point one oh six, that's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, alpha, uh, so you can do that. That has a, fi a fix for for Android in it. So that's something to to uh, to make sure you do. And then um, you do on iOS have to run pod install, uh, which I did already on this machine. Because by the way, FYI, I'm back on my Intel machine. I don't have my M1 M1 Max. I'm very sad about that. But I sold it to one of my employees, Lizzie. She needed a new machine, and I ordered a new Mac Studio. So the Mac Studio is going to be coming whenever it comes. In the meantime, I'm going to have to kind of slum it with this Intel i9. You know, it's kind of weird to think of a $3,500 machine as, as obsolete, you know, two, three years later. But unfortunately, I feel like that's where we are. And um, it will do the job, but there will be some background noise in terms of uh, some fan noise. And also, it'll be a little slower. So I tried, I compiled everything beforehand and it is working. Um, there is a playground 
Uh, there's a hello world, you can see. Now they talk here in the readme about, and I say they as if Christian's not sitting here right with me. Uh, React Native Skia has two APIs, a declarative API available as React Native Render and an imperative API backed by JSI. So this is interesting because, and this is what I have in the, 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 uh, the, the app so far. We'll probably be playing with both of them. Um, but there are some, some provided um, um, components, uh, Canvas and Circle and Group. Uh, and in this case, we're simply exporting, and I actually have this. I'm just going to go over and jump into it. Um, so, and Christian is in here as a, a, a Visual Studio live share. Um, so we have React, uh, we have Canvas Circle and Group, and then we're, we're rendering this. We can style it just like a React native um, component in general. And then inside that Canvas, then you can render stuff. Now, tell me what the group is for. Like, I guess it's so that you can do this blend mode thing. In this case, yeah. So group is basically everything set on the group uh, mm -hmm. is for all the components inside the group. Okay. So typically, typically you would use it for things like the blend mode and yep. stuff like uh, uh, transforms and so on. So if I were to obviously, I have this this app right here, and I just uh, deleted essentially, you know, the the content inside of it. And now, if I were to go in here and and do our hello world and import that and then save it, we now have uh, React Native Skia's rendering uh, three circles in the, that canvas area there. And uh, this was pretty much just copied and pasted directly in here. There's some, there's a little, little bit of math. There's like, you know, we're, we're kind of using these variables, the width and the height and the radius. So if I were to change this radius, for example, to 50, well, now they're very small and the other one's off the screen here. Um, and if I were to change these to like, 295, 295, they get closer together. So you can see that they're reacting to what we're doing here and it's rendering um, rendering, and it's using the blend mode. So you have, uh, in this case, colors, you have cyan, magenta, and yellow, and it's doing a multiply blend mode. And if you blend all of those together, of course, it's gonna come up as black in the middle there. That's right, yeah. Kind of a fun one. Um, let me catch up with chat really quick. Uh, Watching while I work. By the way, uh, all I did to get this to work, just so you know, was what you saw in the, the readme here. It was literally yarn add this. I made sure I had the, the latest version, but I did yarn add this. And then I ran pod install. And then I copied in this, this file. That's all I did. There was no more to it. It, it just worked, right? I had to recompile, but that was it. Um, Danny says, watching while I work. I think it's awesome to see Skia get funding. I agree with that. Uh, looks really cool. Alpha Schmelfa. <laughs> Does <laughs> Skia have an Expo config plugin? Danny asks. No, not yet. We, we don't yeah. have anything related to Expo, but we are, uh, as I said previously in the chat, we are working closely with Expo to provide support for Skia in Expo later. Yep. So someday it will come. Perfect. Uh, so that's the declarative API. I didn't do this one yet, but there is the imperative API. You can pull in uh, Skia. You can pull in blend mode, Skia view, and use draw callback from React Native Skia. And then um, essentially then you're, you're, you're just kind of calling methods then. And so you have this on draw callback, which is simply passed into your Skia view right here. Uh, and then that on draw is obviously called and then when you are in that situation, you get a canvas and that canvas can, you can draw circles on it. You can do some other things too. Um, and you can also do things like, obviously you have this paint here. Um, yeah, I guess there's, there's more to this, but uh, this is the imperative way to do it. And in this case, it's probably when you're, um, I, I guess, I don't know, uh, there, there'd, be a, there'd be a reason to use that versus this. Uh, what would that be? Yeah, so, so I can say a few words about uh, yeah. the difference between the imperative and the declarative mm -hmm. API. So uh, first of all, the imperative API is where you have access directly to calling methods, controlling stuff directly on the C++ objects. Yeah. So when you call paint something or draw something, you actually call C++ functions nice. directly. But as you can see, it's it's a bit more, or should I say, it's it's not very React-like. Mm -hmm. It's uh, right. like more like drawing in, in HTML with the canvas context in right. HTML. But uh, 
So what William has done in the declarative API is to use the React reconciler, which is uh, the package driving all of the um, decoding and uh, uh, how should I say everything related to JSX? Right. So when you see JSX code, it's uh, the reconciler who actually takes that JSX code and converts it into things going on uh, on your screen. And the reconciler is actually super awesome. It contains a lot of very fast codes. So mm -hmm. we decided to use the React reconciler and build our, our own uh, declarative API using a custom reconciler. So what you see in the declarative API is very it's a very small uh, abstraction layer above the imperative api that we just ah, saw okay so it's using so like up, draw yeah. circle uh to do circles yeah yeah that makes sense yeah mm. and, yeah. and i think um it's okay it's of course uh there is a small uh, overhead to doing the declarative um using the declarative api but i think if you're doing just Things like this, rendering simple things, uh, not too many objects at once. Uh, the declarative API is actually really awesome. I'm using it myself all the yeah. time. I, I started when I, when we started this. I thought that I would be the imperative guy doing all my examples imperatively, <laughs> and William will be using the declarative API. But it ended up with me doing declarative things as well. I'm, okay. I'm using it because it's it's really simple, and especially with the new. Uh, animation APIs that yeah. we have uh, added, uh, it works like a charm. It's yeah. really easy to work with. But of course, uh, what we're working on right now is to make sure that the performance is good. So we are yeah. like trying to render 2,000 rectangles at, screen, <laughs> at the screen at the one time, animating them, uh, and making sure that you can do that without uh, getting um, getting any issues. Yep. So. We, we could at some time in the chat, if it, uh, if we find the time, we could say a few words and discuss a little bit about uh, rendering and threads and JavaScript threads and UI threads, etc. Oh, yeah. Uh, because because I know people are used to the worklet thing in the animated, so we could talk about uh, some of the things that we are thinking about doing in, in Skia as well. That's Yeah, that's awesome. There's, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of these things that a typical you know, kind of your typical UIs, you're not going to be thinking about too much. But when you are getting into stuff like these custom 2D drawing canvases and you're, and you're maybe adding in some animations and some other things like that, these things do start playing a part in, of course, making sure you're delivering the, the experience to the user and, you know, buttery smooth 60 frames per second or whatever. Uh, you need yeah. to make sure you're, you're thinking about all this stuff. Yeah, and it's it's a really hard thing because it's it's so easy to create simple examples that right. works really well. But then right. you're, you're part of a bigger ecosystem, and yeah. you're part of other components, and you're part of a navigation system. So it's um, yeah, yeah, it, it could be could be ugly. <laughs> uh, a few more questions here. How did you design the API? Did you take inspiration, or wanted to be similar to any other APIs? So that is a really good question. So. Yeah. We, we actually started thinking about the API part of this and yeah. uh, decided that instead of spending a lot of time trying to implement an API, we would implement the imperative API mm -hmm. um, using the Canvas Kit API. So we are kind of trying to go one-to-one -one on all the methods and signatures and everything from the Canvas Kit. Yep. Uh, so everything you see here should be pasteable directly into uh, a web page using Canvas Kit. That's amazing. And Canvas Kit is, yeah. That that makes a lot of sense because uh, then you can not only transfer code, but just knowledge. If someone's already used it, they can just come over and be like, oh, I've got it here. Boom. And just start using it. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good point. Yeah. That makes so, sense. Uh, so what you're seeing here is uh, is actually a live Canvas Kit drawing, I think, uh, with the samples uh, on that page. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm, of course, a, a few seconds behind yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching your screen. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, did, yeah. I forgot to mention, uh, Christian is watching on the same stream as everybody else. And so uh, he's hearing my voice in real time, but he's having to wait for it to catch up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do have uh, Ski open here. And these, are, these aren't these are like GIFs. These are like actual real like Canvas kits uh, yeah. renderings. And what you're seeing now with the with the text on the, on the first Whoa. example uh, is actually uh, the paragraph part of Skia, which is a really awesome way to draw right. text. Uh, 
right? Uh, which is something that we are uh, putting into into Skia for React Native, React Native now. So wow. you can draw text now, but you should be able to do paragraph formatting and uh, yeah, stuff like, like, like you're seeing that one flowing flowing yeah. Yeah, through there. Yeah, I got yeah. distracted and by I the that, I got distracted yeah. by the the shader, which has just blown my mind a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. And you said this is going to be capable. You're going to be able to do this as well. Yeah, no. yeah that's doable. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. You can do that. Um, there's some click. Oh, you can see the fiddles. Okay, yep, that's really cool. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, let's see here. Who just uh, Jetters? Jetters, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, and then uh, Malvikus says, "Can I use?" React Native Skia in production for charts, for example. You could, but uh, as we talked about uh, a few minutes ago, you should be aware that we will be changing stuff. So we, we will not be stable in our APIs, uh, but you will probably be fine by if you want to use it for charts, for example, mm -hmm. which yeah. is probably something that we could look at uh, as well when we do some yeah. coding here. Yeah, let's let's do some coding. Like we've been we've yeah. been talking a lot. Let's do some coding. What do you want to do first? I I guess I I definitely wanted to just show some basic stuff, but if you have something in mind, let's let's tackle it. Yeah, I think the the first thing that I always want to show is uh, is the latest things that we've been adding because that's where we had most fun. So, yeah. I mean, animations a big thing for uh, React yeah. Native. Yep. So we have really awesome tools for animating views and properties today We're using okay. Animated. Th those tools are really good for, yeah. for view animation. So we were thinking, OK, we could use that in Skia, but we could also take a chance and try to build something that would be more effective when it comes to 2D drawing and 2D animations, which is actually quite different from what you need when you're animating properties on views to change background colors and sizes and stuff. Sure. So we, we decided to do that. So in Skia, we, last Friday, we released the new animation engine, okay. which is uh, really, really easy to work with, I yep. think, probably okay. because we, we, we made it. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it, <laughs> and, and it's everything is run uh, directly in uh, C++ native codes. That's awesome. Uh, the only thing that we, yeah. So, so we call back, of course, and do the JavaScript for calling the drawing commands, right. like draw a circle, draw something, but we, we aren't using the bridge or going back and forth between native and JavaScript to, to do animations. So um, it's all based on values, which is something that you could kind of compare to the shared values in reanimated. Okay. You probably have used reanimated. Right, sure, uh, yeah. Yep, yep. So <laughs> a value is uh, just a container. Okay. It's the state in the Skia world, so it doesn't, force react to re-render in any way right so um i mean I, I could show you since i have access to the code here we could do something yeah. really simple yeah let's so do something what if we wanted to just move one of those circles so, yeah uh i could create a loop okay which goes from uh let's see that need to import it yep I'll uh, I'll try to stay on top of imports, and then you can just keep keep typing. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's good. So this loop will play a value or change the value between zero and one, and back to zero zero again, right? Okay. So you have a value based on the clock. Everything done natively. Right. So that's a value. That's a value. You can inspect that value and, and see see that it will change. Um, but what we can do, which is more interesting, is to derive values from this value. So this mm -hmm. is a value between 0 and 1, which is always the starting point for all animations. Okay. So if you want to, you could say, OK, let me uh, change the radius of these circles. So I could create a derived value. Let's see, derived value. And then you can import derived value. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm giving this as uh, the last argument is just uh, the value that is driven by the loop. So that's okay. the number be between zero and one. OK. Um, so I could change this a bit and say, OK, 10 plus uh, the loop value uh, times, let's say, 180 then. OK, OK. So whenever the loop value changes, 
which it does like uh, 60 times per frame, okay. this expression will be recalculated. Okay. Okay. And if we use this radius value for the property, the radius property in, in the circle, like we can do it for all of them. Right. Like this. Mm -hmm. And if we save, uh, hopefully everything should. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> and it's looping. Um, yeah. Uh, and the loop will. Uh, you said the loop goes between one and two or zero and one? No, it's, it's, it's zero and one. Zero yeah. and one. And it loops uh, in duration. It goes, it takes two seconds to go from zero to one. And then it goes, it takes two seconds to go back or or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And we can add stuff like e-sync's here. So okay. we can have. Uh, I think we need to import e-sync. I'll uh, grab e here. Uh, e cubic. Okay. Uh, and we can save this and see what happens. Obviously, I see what what's going on like <laughs> ten seconds after you do it. Sure. Uh, I had to do a refresh, cool. but now I totally see the easing now. Yeah. Yeah. So different easings for different animations here. That's super. Yeah. Cool. That's uh, super cool. Yeah, I can see it now as well. And, and we also support uh, things like springs and stuff. So if you want to, you could uh, uh, use springs instead of uh, regular timing based animations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, the basic thing is that we are using these values based on these clocks. Yep. Uh, and you can derive and build your own set of tree structure coming out from that zero to one value and do I mean, whatever was, you want. To. That was two lines of code. Like that's, that's ridiculous. That's, that's yeah. so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, and then I, you yeah, can this is, trigger uh, you could trigger some of that on on certain actions, right? Like if something happens, we start this animation. Yeah, something in particular you were thinking of? Uh, I don't know. I was like maybe if they if if we if they don't start until we click on the canvas or something like that. Yeah, that's doable as well. So okay. these uh, animations functions that place or changes these values are provided both as hooks, which mm -hmm. will be things that will be played over and over again or just once. Yeah. And then you can also use imperative versions of them to start a spring. And we can take a look at that uh, as well if you want to. So yeah. let's see. I mean, this is a super simple way of doing animations. And this is also a very flexible and mm -hmm. uh, powerful way of building these values because all of these things are um done in native c++ mm -hmm. and from c++ we call back to these small functions with these small expressions and that is super fast okay so it doesn't kind of it doesn't um, give you a performance problem or anything right. by by using javascript to build these yeah, uh, small fact, functions and you can have a lot of lot of them as well if you want to, to animate more things that, so you can use the same loop value for example now i'm just talking you can stop me if you want yeah to. go for it uh, Let's say uh, we can say animate the x value of one of the circles mm -hmm. like this, and then, and then eventually like I will see that comes something in happens from the left side and kind of moves with the with the growing. Yeah, and it's using um, the same easing as well. So yeah, because it's really just tied to that value, and every time that that changes. Um, then it's going to derive that from that value. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing here is that um, whenever something changes, you will invalidate kind of the whole tree with all the dependencies on that value. Okay. And that in, in, in turn will post a message to the Skia view saying that, hey, something has changed. We need to redraw. Yeah. And then the native code can do the repainting itself. And it doesn't need to happen on the same thread or it doesn't need to happen in the same frame or anything. Right. So. We are totally free to, to do whatever we want. So the plan is to move all the rendering to a separate thread yeah. so that you won't kind of disturb the JavaScript thread with any of these rendering things. So the only thing running on JavaScript will be these small functions calculating these new values, for example. Yeah. Um, by the way, on the stream, it may not be that smooth, but on my computer, it is buttery smooth. It is just super, super smooth right now. So just so you know, like I don't know if the stream is really showing how good it is. It looks a little herky jerky in the, my preview um uh and that answers chan man's question of does hello world run once and then use loop runs on a different thread that's basically what you just said was that yeah. it's so so thread. it does it runs um it is actually triggered by the screen refresh on the device mm -hmm. so that whenever the device is about to paint the screen you will be notified 
and, and the JavaScript will evaluate these small functions and redraw the underlying yep. Skia view. And that's a nice thing with that is that when, when we get this, um, our new iPhones with the 120 hertz refresh rate, we will be able to take advantage of that as right. well. Right, without having to rewrite anything. That makes sense. Yeah. Ahmed uh, says, I love where the React Native community is headed. New architecture, Skia, upcoming Expo maps, Expo modules, writing modules in Pure Swift and Kotlin, RNX kit, lots of exciting stuff. Yeah, totally. In fact, RNX kit we just had on our previous uh, Friday stream uh, and it, with Adam, and that went really well. There's a lot of like cool tooling stuff happening there that will make our lives a lot easier. Um Malvika says, what about scrolling, uh, moving the chart too big to fit all together in the canvas? How can we do this in Skia? Can I embed a scroll view? So yes, you can embed a scroll view or what you would do is to embed the Skia view inside a scroll view, right? Mm. So th there would be a huge Skia canvas and then you would embed it in a scroll view. But I would rather recommend that you would uh, do that scrolling calculation inside the canvas and make sure that you only draw the things that are actually visible and interesting for you in the in, in the area that you want to show. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so you, you would do some sort of a, would that be more of the imperative uh, API or could you do that with declarative? No, we, we can do that as well. So let's say, uh, I mean, if you want to, we can do a, a we, quick, we, we don't uh, have to, like, like you can if you Sorry? want, like, but that's definitely more of an advanced topic, I'd assume, but uh, that's, if you want to go down Not that really. So we, yeah. we, we, okay, I won't start drawing any charts here now, okay? <laughs> so because what he's also asking about is the, the scroll view where you're actually using your mouse to pan around and sure. move around. So yeah. we can sh easily show uh, how this can be used. So okay. we have something called on touch in the canvas where you can provide a touch handler. Okay. So this is not to be confused with the gesture handlers um, from uh, reanimated um, okay. software mansion. Okay. So we are only providing you with the touch points. So okay. we don't detect any any um, gestures, but that's okay. Okay. Yep. So let's see. Let's create a touch handler. Yep. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very important. I, I gotta, so I gotta feel then, useful somehow here. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. This is such a, such a pleasure to be able to program without. Oh, I, I know. The, yeah. <laughs> take take your time. Oh, okay. Yeah, take your time. So uh, let's say when we get the um, mm -hmm. callback from an active uh, touch event. Yeah. We could uh, instead of deriving this C value from or what, let's see what we could do here. We could transform everything actually. So let's create a variable uh, containing the mouse position. So it okay. could be uh, mouse equals use value, which we already have an import for, I think, which consists of a point X and Y. So whenever we move the mouse, we could take the current value of um, the mouse and say it should be X and Y. Oh, okay. Right. So whenever you do any touching, you will get a new value. Um, and then we could uh, create a transform using the same derived value system uh, mm -hmm. with the mouse as the input. Ah. Like this. And then we could return. Uh, and this is actually something that William has created where you can use the regular React Native transform syntax. Oh, to write your transforms. Really? That is to, really nice. Yeah, it's super awesome. Yeah, because that, that becomes uh, just a, a nice analog. Uh, you, you can take your existing knowledge and use it there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's so awesome. So, so you're getting okay, the mouse now, value, and which will be an X and a Y, and you're using the dot X for that transform. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm obviously doing this really fast now. And that's not, <laughs> not on purpose. That's just because I have done this a few times. Now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, let's let's step back a few, take a few steps back. So, yeah. so ask some questions, and I'll try to. Do so this, uh, one question I have is you have you have an array here. You're you're returning an array. Um, why is that? Because you can do multiple things here. Like what what's yeah. yeah. 
you, you can think of it as the same way you would write translate uh, transforms in mm -hmm. React Native. So if yeah. you were to transform and both the X and the Y, okay, you would do go like this. Okay, that makes and sense. And you can add scaling as well. So that's okay. the way we are used to writing transforms in React yeah, Native. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's, it's, it's totally whatever. based on that. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, and the touch handler is just a hook that we provide that is able to create the touch handler and right. we have some simple uh, callbacks that you can write to, to handle uh, the touching of, uh, yeah. of the ski of you. Yeah, okay. And, and since we already have a group around this one, we can provide that transform uh, derived value as a value to the transform property Ooh. of the group. So everything inside this group will be transformed. Okay, so if I if I save here and I'm gonna to have to probably do a full. I think refresh. I just saved. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, unexhaustive handling for transform Y. Okay, did we get some kind of error message? Um, because I don't see it. You know, it's, it says it's unexhaustive. Oops. Whoa! I just, I just, it just it's it's something I did maybe. Yeah. Unexhaustive handling for transform Y is the error. Yeah, this is probably something. Let's let me just try to I'm not sure. Let's see. Current snap. I wish this was a little more helpful. Yeah, it's not the best uh, error message message we're getting, but uh, uh, we could try <laughs> just to say 100 and then yeah, and zero, see, just to try to see what happens here. Still happens, getting the yeah. same. Um, you are? Yes. And exhaustive uh, handling for transform Y. Okay, let, let me just see. Uh, <laughs> these are like when you're live on these things. Oh, happens, I know. I know. Uh, yeah. Have we done we done anything wrong here? Like it's translate X and uh, it's translate Y. And oh, translate are... Y, not transform Y. Ah, right? nice. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And then yeah. we could probably put. Um, yeah, back those. Uh, put back uh, the. Uh, it'd be m dot x. Whoops. And yep. m dot y. That's right. <clears throat> okay. Then you should be able to um, move your mouse around on the screen and see if uh, if you can move that view. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm gonna yarn iOS again here. I don't know what's going on. It just crashed a couple times. We'll give it. A yeah, shot. I can see the crash, but I, I get them a bit later than you do. So yeah, maybe it's something that we're doing. I don't know. Well, we'll 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 let that. Uh, it shouldn't take long because it's cached. Um, but yeah, we'll rebuild that there, and I'm gonna catch up here. Smooth is better on my machine, says Derek. Christian is so knowledgeable. I think we'll need a follow up stream, Jim. I agree. I think we're <laughs> I think we're we're seeing <laughs> Thank that. You. Uh, Derek, by the way, we have a spammer over on the YouTube side. If you could take care of that. Um, Ahmed says Utro. Yeah, okay. If we had watched chat, then then they would have told us. <laughs> yeah, transform yeah, I can see it now. We were yeah. too busy looking. Yep. <laughs> okay, so as I click, uh, it moves it around to it transforms it. Yeah, it just moves it to where it needs to be. Yeah. So we could, if we wanted to, like minus you know, one fifty, and I don't know what the actual thing is, but yeah. uh, minus one fifty, mm -hmm. and then um, now it's kind of sort of in the center here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I think it's one of the things that you're seeing now is that you have embedded the, the screen in a scroll view, so exactly. it kind of steals. Yeah. It does. So it should um, probably. If I just maybe got rid of the scroll view entirely, does that fix? Um. Oh, right. Hold on. Whoa. Uh, oh, it's because the background style is part of that. If I if I just change that to a view. Yeah. Get rid of that. Let's go. Yeah, let's just get rid of change this scroll to view. This might be a problem with my machine, to be honest. Um yeah, so it crashes again? Yeah. 
Yeah, it did crash. Um, not entirely sure what is going on here. It might be something that? with uh, with the style because you have that content style in uh, in the scroll view, which you are. Not, if you would, um, yeah, set the back background style, uh, which is yeah, like a flex. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would okay. do it. Yeah, that did it. Perfect. So yeah, yeah now, and that's probably why it crashes as well. And now I can actually yeah, hold, the I can actually hold the mouse down, and it doesn't intercept that, which was it was doing before because it was in a scroll view. But now I can yeah. actually click and drag, and it's like I'm panning, basically. Yeah. Because it's translating wherever it needs to go. Mm. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So of course we would have to add some offsets and stuff so that you can mm -hmm. release it and click again and scroll more. But right. Uh, rather than yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. yeah. But there would be, that's a straightforward um, process then to do that. That makes sense. Yeah. And then is, to. That was kind of a way to answer the question about right. how, how should we do scrolling and gra yeah. graphs and, or charts and stuff. So using this mouse system combined mm -hmm. with the these animation values that yeah. we have should probably be enough for you to build uh, things. And I'm, I know we are talking with developers uh, using Skia yeah. um, already, and they are building charts like this. A lot of charts are actually being built at the moment using Skia, yeah, using and Skia. also scrolling charts coming in from the right and, yeah. or from the left and yep. adding new numbers and scrolling in yep. a nice way. And you, so, could, uh, um, you could calculate if, if an element is in view, um, probably simply by by checking the transform and where it is and how big of a bounding box it has. And then you could kind of like from there. You, you really don't need to because when we render into the Skia yeah. world, we are actually uh, removing everything that isn't on screen. Really? Yes. So you do that that culling already. Yeah, we do. So you don't need to think about that. But of course, you would have to think about the fact that if your graphs are just, or charts are just going and they're becoming bigger and bigger, you need to kind of cut off uh, the data for sure. the yeah. charts that you don't show anymore. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just from a calculating all of that stuff standpoint. So yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. Um, so I actually think this might be a good uh, break point. We've been doing this for about an hour and 12 minutes or so. Uh, so we're going to take a little break here and then we'll be back and we'll do some more experiments with skip. We're not getting super far, but that's okay. The re that's the, totally, that's part of the, these streams to be completely honest. Like we, we, we dive into the stuff. We ask a lot of questions. We talk about a lot of stuff and, um, we do a little coding and then we leave everybody wanting more, including myself and hopefully do a follow up stream at some point. So we will be back soon. Um, I'm going to actually leave it on the dual coding screen here, uh, and I'm going to put, um, let's see here, I'm just going to put a uh, quick break uh, back soon. So I'm figuring uh, probably just, you know, five minutes or so, and then uh, we will be back, back in the saddle. So Perfect. thanks everybody, and uh, we will be back very shortly. In the meantime, enjoy this animation, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you in a bit. Okay.
Okay, I'm back. Let me get hello. Get things set back up here. Yes. This is really fun, by the way. It's yeah. uh, really nice to be on the stream with you. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming on. It's it's fantastic. Um, there's, we're we're I'm learning a ton, and uh, there's been some really great questions from the chat. So absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, Chan Man says it's always flex one. Yeah, it's true. What are some? What about more advanced gestures? Pinch and zoom. Can we use React Native gesture handler with React Native Skia? Yeah, so that, that's also a very good question. So we yeah. do have a very simple bridge where you could uh, use the shared values from Reanimated uh, as values. Uh, provided to the canvas as well so that's possible if mm. you want to we don't support any advanced gestures gestures or anything uh -huh. because we think that that's not our responsibility not your job, yeah. obviously you can build build it if you want to but uh, we think that the gesture handles from software mansions are such a good library that you should definitely use it if you if you want to yep that makes or sense if you need it mm. yep. yeah um let's see here what kind of sorcery is that? Says manual. <laughs> Subtractive color blend made in a mode in React Native. Yeah, that's React Native Skia. Uh, are you guys done already? Uh, yeah, we're we were um, we were taking a break. Sorry, Emmanuel. Um, cool. Well, what do you want to do next? Because there's a lot more that uh, React Native Skia can do than just what we're showing here. I was I was just thinking if we show some of the path uh, things that we're providing in Skia mm -hmm. because people have been asking for charts and, and stuff so we yeah. can show how that can be done. Okay. Um, we can still continue to use the example that we have sure. at the moment. Um, so what I, I just wanted to do was to show how to draw simple paths. So okay. let's just draw a path and then we can also get into some of the. Um, logic behind uh, the declarative API that we're okay. viewing now with some, some more details. So let's just start with all the, like the right value thing. So if, if that's in, <coughs> in view in screen. Yep, I got so, it. So yeah, so, so let me just create a very simple path. And instead of spending a lot of time, let's see, I can probably uh, just paste in some simple code here so comment out our circles here for now um oh yeah I need you to can do that mm -hmm. grab the use so i think this should be it we need to import use path uh which is a hook that just memorizes a path because that's okay. something we we should remember in skia that uh recreating stuff whenever you draw it yeah. isn't recommended you should create static objects like paths and stuff right. like that up front and then use it so, so basically, that makes use sense. Passes, use mem use memo around the path. Okay. Yep. And, and you are being passed the the path, and and that's a SK path, and then you're saying move to, and then you have a just a simple for loop that is um, drawing some lines from uh, from the point you were at twenty one hundred to kind of a derived uh, using some math here to to make an interesting path. Yeah, it's just a sine curve. Yeah. So it's uh, it's really simple. Okay. That means that we now have the path dot data in in this object, and okay. if we go into the declarative part of this, okay. we can say okay, path, which is also a REST a native Skia okay. thing. Okay. Grab that. Uh, we can provide that path. Uh, we can also say that we should use uh, stroke as the style for this Ooh, path. Okay. And with the color of let's say red, just to make it really simple. Okay. And yeah. then if I refresh. Uh, whoop! Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is my my computer just it just crashed again. But uh, okay. <laughs> but you can Let's... see now. It may be hard to see on the stream, but you, there is. And I'm just gonna make this a little. Yeah, but before yeah, I can change the stroke width. That'd be nice. Yeah. Let's see. Five. I think okay. that should be a good number, and it should reload automatically. I think. Yep. As well. And there it is. And I can actually yeah. click and drag it around because of the previous stuff that we did. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> we can remove that one. So we nice. almost have uh, made a movable chart here. So that's isn't that crazy? Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And but, uh, but, and these lines too. 
are just straightforward lines. I mean, you're, you're not doing anything, you know, this isn't. So you could actually, if you had a set of data, you could then render it. In fact, do you mind if I try doing something kind of data like oh, here? I, 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 I may, I may totally, uh, uh, fall over on my face here, but I'm just going to, I'm going to try. Um, so we're just going to have a, a list of data and maybe this is, um, something like, uh, Maybe a hospital is tracking uh, coronavirus, um, you know, COVID uh, cases or something, and they might have, you know, 100. And we're going to go the the, the, the good uh, route here, and, and things are going to be dropping mostly. Um, maybe drop, pop back up, and then drop pretty pretty quickly down to, um, you know, we're just going to drop and drop and drop until it's zero. Okay, that's what we want. So there's our data. And then here we're going to uh, maybe go um, – so our starting point here might be like uh, const start x is 20 and const start y is 100. So that's where we're kind of starting there. Um, and then each time that we loop through this, we're going to have to kind of, there'll be sort of like a, uh, we're going to go to the right. So it'd be like, I guess the day, the day would start at zero. So the first day. Um, and then we're going to start there and we're going to loop through. Uh, actually, no, we could, we could just do it in the in the for loop here. Let's just do that. So the, the day is zero and we have how many here? Uh, so for You probably just say data.length. It's like 10. On this one, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I could just do that. Yeah, good call. Data.length. Okay. Zero. And then we're going to so do that. And then what we're going to do is um, start x plus and then i times 20 i guess and then we're going to here we're just going to go start y minus um data i and then this multiply by i don't know two is probably fine and let's just see what happens here so there we go so obviously maybe i should have done in the first one i probably should have just done a move to there, but um, but yeah, there's an actual chart of actual data that we're seeing. Uh, this is like COVID cases in the hospital and they're dropping and you see it happen right there. That was like, I literally did that in what, two minutes or something? Like that was fast. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I mean, if you wanted to animate this, yeah. you could do that super easy as well because one of the, the simple animations that we use on paths, yeah. just to kind of start at the, <clears throat> just showing the first part of the path and then expand the path. <laughs> so you already have a loop variable. Yeah. Uh, and the good thing with the path component is that it already has a start and end property, which can yeah. be between zero and one. So you could True. just say um, inside the path component, okay. you say n equals loop, okay. which is our value that already goes from zero to, uh, to one. No way. No way. That is blowing my mind a little bit right there. <laughs> what? Yeah, that, that's cool. <laughs> that is cool. That is super yeah. cool. Okay, I this is bugging me though, this this spike here. So I'm gonna try to fix that. So um <laughs> Okay, do that. Uh <laughs> let's see here. So we're actually gonna start at one. And we're gonna do the move. The move to is just gonna be this here, but we're gonna say um it will be uh, uh, data uh, zero, I guess. I think that should do it. What did I do? Yeah. I oh and this one too. I uh, think just, yeah. that's just that's just zero there. Hey. So just uh, actually yeah. just be start x. There we go. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. And then you could obviously draw like a box around it, or you know fill it in, or do something. Um, yeah, and that's the next cool thing that we could say. Okay, because all of these objects are no, we are we have just drawn with. Right. color properties like that's super boring so let's uh let's try something else um we could for example uh create because in, in skia everything that you draw is rendered with a paint object so you define a paint object describing how this should be painted yeah yeah uh, it means colors and you can use other things than solid colors you can use uh, linear gradients and shadows yeah. and shaders and all sorts of stuff. You can even draw using images. 
So yeah. it's uh, super easy. So let's declare a paint object, okay. which I think we need to, um, we can move the color red inside here. Okay. Just to see. So all the objects that follow oh, the I paint. I need to do my job. I'm not doing my group. job. I, uh, I have one job and I'm okay. not doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so quick, but you know. So <laughs> uh... <laughs> all right. Let's see what happens here. So are we still seeing? It's uh, red. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's still red. So yep. so that's basically instead of using color inside of the component, mm -hmm. you will be using color inside of the paint, and all following components will use that paint definition. But you can of course add multiple paint uh, objects, uh, like so. The next all next following components will be right. rendered in yellow, etc. But I that's see. not very funny. But doing a little bit more. Uh, and now I think we uh, need um, an import again. Okay. I will stop. Uh, will not save until. We <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Quit making me look bad here. This is uh, you know. <laughs> this is <It's> awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yep. probably want to import vec as well. I think. Okay, vec. Yep. Stands for I assume vector. It's a vector. Yeah. Yep. It is. So vec, let's say two hundred <laughs> zero. By the way, uh, I think that's Mark Rousevi, uh says, I'm your biggest friend, or sorry, big, biggest fan. Can you say hi to my mom? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hi, Mark's mom. Really nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, Malvikus is, uh, well. is rather... Mark is, uh, yeah, he's, he's such a nice guy. He has helped us a lot. And oh, yeah. He, he provides so much valuable input to the things that we're doing. So That's uh, awesome. He's a joy working with. Mark, Mark's awesome. So, I'm going to have to have him on uh, doing some stream yeah, stuff you at should. some point. Definitely. Uh, Malvikus and OG both both are impressed. Uh, Jose, that's amazing. Super cool. And then Manuel says, wait, you did that just by adding end equals loop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that the loop variable was actually created uh, up here and is a value that will change every frame yeah. uh, with the time, current timestamp. So it's, it's it just um, animates. Yeah, automatic. Yeah. So let's see what I've done now. I've Inside of the paint object, yeah. I've created a linear gradient. And okay. if you have done your job by importing stuff, <laughs> you can save it. <laughs> so uh, now no, we I should didn't. see. The... What did I do wrong? Colors.map. Sorry, I'm, I'm. It's my my fault. No, no, like this, of course. Okay. Yeah, my fault. Okay, I, I got too excited. I think I need to <laughs> refresh here. Uh, undefined colors. Wait. Colors dot map still. Um, okay, let me see. Sorry, it's colors. Is it? S, I see. Ooh, now we've got a gradient too. Let's take the loop yeah. out for just a second, just so we can see it a little yeah, easier. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah, you you can see that there's a gradient goes from uh, red to orange. Yeah, we can make it a bit bigger as well, just to make sure that we see everything. There you go. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. That almost looks like a logo. <laughs> Yeah, it does. So, you could draw a logo data. with this. You totally could. <laughs> Chan Man yeah, says, and, and my, there are cool my... things like uh, if you think it looks a bit just square, you can say that the, uh, let's say, stroke cap mm -hmm. should be round. Okay. And then you will get the round start and stop of, of the path, for example. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Stroke cap. Um, question for you. Uh, this is totally dumb, but let, let's say we wanted to animate the stroke width. What do we do to do that? Yeah. I assume it has something to do with the, uh, with like a use value. Yeah. So, so let's say that you want to animate the stroke with between 10 and 15. Yeah. And uh, so you should be able to, this is a task for you. So you should be able to add or create a new. Oh boy. Value. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. this is, this is going to be interesting. Uh, so I think we are doing a, we have the, we have the, the loop. Um, yep. we have the loop and we can do that. Now we have to use the, we have to do a use derived value, I think. So let's do the stroke width, uh, equals, let's see if I can type here, use derived value. And in this derived value, we're going to have to pass in, uh, the 
current width, or well, it would be using the loop. Um, mm -hmm. And then we would just have to multiply that, or let's see here, we're going to go, you said between 10 and 15, 10. so we're going to plus W times, we have to go up by 5, and then I, I want to pass in loops so that we can kind of go back and forth on that, and then I think I just passed that in. I may be wrong about this, but let's see. Whoa, I think it's working. <laughs> Yeah, did I pass the, the test? <laughs> you did. <laughs> okay, so the derived value is taking some other value that will change at some point. And then anytime it changes, it derives it using this this little little function here. Obviously, it could be a bigger function if you needed to, but a uh, but little function there. And then when you pass it in instead of a uh, just a number, then Skia is very smart about that. And it says, oh, this needs to animate anytime that this changes. That's totally how it works. Yeah. Awesome. That's super. And you can cool. also provide multiple values. So if you if this is the right value based on multiple values, you yeah. pass in C X and you would get two parameters like C oh. W and C X and you can use that as well. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. That is really cool. I think it's it's uh, it shows shows uh, some it's it's really powerful. We have done super uh, a lot of super nice things with this, and I mean yeah. this doesn't does just, uh, just work with uh, numbers. It works with texts and colors and everything you want to. So let's uh, just remove the little thing that I did. Uh, if you want to just as a simple example, we could create a text. Okay. With the same data that you provided yep just to see so where's the loop yep. yeah uh, the loop is uh sorry let's see w and maybe two fixed two okay mm -hmm. and now we have a text a string that is actually changing and we can use text rendering in skia as well okay okay so we could just add a simple text component uh here so now you need to import again <laughs> By the way, yeah, it's animating both the width, the stroke width, and it's doing the the end uh, animation, which is super smooth. Yeah, and this is actually super smooth on Android as well. So it, okay, uh, it's uh, that's good to know. It, it looks exactly the same on Android. That's amazing. Okay, so yeah. okay, so you have you want to put some text on the screen now? Yeah, I was just thinking. Let's see. I just need to remember we had text property, which is now. The value of the derived value called and text. i do have to so bring text in from react native skia yeah because right. it's instead of the the react native text yeah that's a good yep. point <laughs> yep and then we can just place it somewhere mm -hmm. uh, x y and by the I way, people. I, I just. Yeah. Uh, by the way, people, I am going to be pushing this up as a uh, open source repo so people can look at what we did um and uh, and you'll be able to clone it down and, and play with it yourself. Yeah, that's good. So, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think we should use font family. Uh, okay. And font size. I think that's the things that we should use. Okay. Like Twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try to save and see what happens. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. Maybe I need to look up those. Value is undefined. Uh, expected a string. So is text. No, it is. So, so this is uh, probably. Um, I'm not sure. Let, let me just check uh, to see what should be there. Two seconds. Yep, no problem. I'm gonna verify. We've got text. It's just my um, my data is. I think my properties are a bit off. Let's see. Am I? I'm not importing something I shouldn't, right? No, we're good. All right. We're good. I was just thinking about those uh, font ways of putting it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, uh, let's see. Uh, Mark said it's name. color instead of color colors. Uh, uh, Alex says, hey there, just started using Ignite CLI and it's super amazing. That's awesome, Alex. Really appreciate it. Um, we uh, we put a lot of work into Ignite, uh, so really appreciate that. Manuel says, bring back good old font element. 
Uh, Manuel, you must be as old as uh, as me and Christian because you remember that. Um, Malvicus says, will William's um, stream on React Native Skia be available? It gets hidden, can't access it anymore. Oh, William's here, and, and he says, we will redo one with a higher resolution, and also some bugs came up will be fixed. Sorry about that. Uh, by the way, hi, William. Thanks for all your work on this as well. Really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I did have Alex Tech TV also followed and Manuel uh, also followed on Twitch. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So, Hello, William. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how is, so how are things looking? So you, if you refresh the, the simulator now, do we see some text or have I totally screwed right up? Right now, it's still saying rendering. exception in host function. Value is undefined, expected yeah. a number. Yeah. Okay. So, so this was not a very good uh, thing that I did here, but obviously it's uh, pro probably just some some properties that I'm getting wrong. So it should be text, and it should be. I'm going to keep an eye on name. chat in case someone knows uh, yeah. what we're supposed Sorry, to be doing here. I see here. It, it's size. Oh. Let's see now. Ah, look at that. Also, look at this uh, number. That is the loop number, and it is being yeah. derived. Uh, the string is being derived. So if I were to say um, loop here and save, um, uh, that's behind it. But yeah, uh, then it obviously shows that. Um, by the way, Z value type stuff, uh, you just obviously move this below um, yeah. the path. And then you can it, move it down if you want to. And then mm. it should render above it. Mm. Oh, and because of the color... <laughs> it's because of the color it's uh it's got the linear gradient now that's funny yeah it does wait so thing, uh hold on a kind of... second this is interesting oh no it's because of the paint is that right yeah the paint yeah, it's that's the paint right. that actually defines how this should be rendered and then now. the rest of this yeah. goes in that yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. uh, so something like maybe 50 here and we're still not quite there but yeah you get the point and I did take the loop, the end off of that. Um, um, I assume there's also a start. Yeah, correct. Okay, so, whoops. So it's now showing it that way, which is really cool. <laughs> very, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Manuel says, is there a reason you're using text instead of text? Uh, oh, text as, with, with text as a prop rather than as a child? really good point so so that's how we are able to animate it so since it's a regular property it can be animated uh yeah because you're passing in not an actual string this is a a, a skia value that's and correct. and yeah. that allows it to read the the current value of the skia value um, when it does a re-render that's um, correct you're starting to get this yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i it, it's really actually pretty like self-explanatory in a way I, I to be completely honest Christian like my favorite thing about these streams other than getting to just hack and hang out with other awesome developers is that I get to learn about all these cool technologies without having to go do a bunch of like my own like stumbling around like I, I get to have uh, have the people working on it or you know work on it with me which is super cool yeah see that see that one and Chanman uh, asks when William's going to come on as well. I'm uh, open invite. I definitely want him on. Yeah, um, I mean, if you think these small graphic examples are impressive <laughs> that we're doing now, <laughs> just wait until William starts with his things. Yeah, I yeah. was watching him creating some young effects on texts in the stream yesterday, yeah. and it was like yeah. mind blowing. Well, William, I know does streaming as well, and William, f feel free to put your your uh, stream link in. Um, the chat as well um but i love uh, i love this it's super cool there's so many possibilities that can be done here um F uh, philip says uh, great stream can a canvas element have transparency so that regular react elements behind the canvas can be visible i'm so impressed by all these super <laughs> nice questions it's a really good question that is uh, and the answer is true okay so you can do that yeah so, so like an opacity yeah. so this uh, this view is now actually I think transparent already because it we don't fill it with, any, with anything uh, we just draw on it. Uh, so um, if you were to put say 
uh, in the app JS, if you put an absolute position element, uh, you would see it through the canvas. So if we were to have, all, a, yeah, we could try that. Something like this, and then uh, if I were to just throw a title in here <clears throat> and say, um, uh, what well, I guess, um, can I just do? Uh, I think you need position absolute first, but that's um... position absolute, and then left. Let's go. I don't know, hundred, and top would be like. 500, 400, I don't know, somewhere in there. Uh, let's I think the only thing that we might see now is that the background style of um, of the view containing the ski view uh, yes. has a background color. So we need to remove that, I think. So there's yeah. that, and I can put it over it. And as you can see, it's, it's rendering over the top of it. Um, and now I want to do, uh, if I were to switch those, yeah. Uh, you can see that the it's also on top of it. So it will render it how you would expect it to. Yeah. And that's also a big point because uh, we know that Flutter has support for native views as well. So you yeah. can mi mix and match. But they've had some issues with uh, these set uh, index things. So it was a bit difficult to, to build real hierarchies with uh, components without getting into trouble so this is react native at its best actually it's uh that's amazing awesome. can we talk about flutter a little bit uh I'd, I'd like to chat a little bit about that because i've been writing an article it's uh it's currently being kind of reviewed um i the the title is very provocative and uh uh you know like uh, obviously um the, the the truth is always more nuanced and I've actually been uh, I've been running this article by some flutter developers which has been really good because I've been able to to um, you know kind of treat it, the subject more fairly um, and obviously flutter is using like all of this cool stuff to render um, their UIs and so they can have a unified UI between web and and Android and, and iOS and have all of this kind of high speed, um, you know, rendering happening, very buttery smooth stuff, really cool. But obviously, it's a different approach. And um, so, I guess one of the questions I have is like, you, why are you not just using Flutter? Like, why are you bringing React Native Skia to to React Native or Skia to React Native? Yeah, so <laughs> another good question. So. Um, <laughs> Of, of, of course, it is because I know React Native sure. very well. Yeah. And I, I think it's it's a decent set of tools. There are some things with React Native, especially regarding tooling, that is a bit hard. I mean, yeah. it feels like Flutter is a smoother experience when you just start using it. It feels a lot smoother developer-wise. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's something we need to fix in React Native as yeah. well, I think. Uh, and that's that can be a big issue. I mean, upgrading <laughs> from one version to another or integrating native stuff, it, it can be really, really hard. Mm -hmm. But I know from it was mentioned, I think, in the RX RNX live uh, yep. RNX, RNX stream kit. you had last yeah. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're building some really cool tools for, for helping out and making a lot of the friction that we experience in React Native better because I mean, one of the, my nightmares is when a client calls and says that we need to upgrade this or that app. And I know that it's on version like 0.62 <laughs> or 61 or something. <laughs> and we need to support Android API level 30. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, no. Oh, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. true. And especially if you're using a lot of packages. And yeah. we are obviously using packages all the time in React Native. And uh, you're you have some integrations built into this so that you have yeah. manually edited all of the, yeah. the delegate app delegate file and right. Java files and so on. It's it's friction. It is yes. definitely friction. Yes. So, but but on the other hand, I think uh, being able to leverage the fact that a lot of people are actually really good at JavaScript and React. Yep. And, I mean React as in React. See, yes. see, you you uh, you yeah. anticipated the 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 crux of my my entire article right there. Uh, okay. Which is, is yeah. you know like what what I said was uh, that you know Flutter is better than React Native in all the ways that don't matter, 
And uh, essentially, the idea there is not that it's not that it doesn't matter. I'm I'm a developer expert, or sorry, a developer experience um, advocate. I, I really think that developer experience does matter, and I can tell that you do too because of the way that you and William have designed this API and how you've approached it. Um, and I do think it matters. It's just that at the end of the day, uh, it's impossible to ignore the elephant in the room and that's JavaScript and React. Like, how do you ignore that? That is such a huge advantage for React Native that it's it's hard to really say, yeah, you should build your, your web app in React like everybody else, but then switch to Flutter and Dart for your mobile. It just doesn't really make sense. Exactly my point as well, and I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. It's it's the big thing with uh, with this discussion, I think. So yeah, and obviously the developer experience, as you said, is something that can be better, and it's a lot of work is done on doing it, making it better as well. We have new tools like the Doctor, uh, React Native Doctor, yes. to find uh, errors in your setup. We yeah. have Flipper, which is a yep. really good tool. Flipper is awesome. Will yeah, so so we will be there someday, but obviously it's we're far away in React yeah. Native from mm -hmm. Flutter, but we have this little thing called JavaScript and React. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's yeah. the big difference. I would I would very much agree with that, and I would also argue that the developer experience gap isn't as probably it, it's 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 not like a showstopper. Like like you can still get you can still be very productive in React Native. You can still do a lot of really cool things with React Native, and there's arguably some parts of it that are better. Um, but uh, I do, I think, give uh, Flutter a lot of credit in the article, which I'm excited about publishing next week. Um, and I, I kind of like go over a lot of the cool things that, that Flutter has to offer um, uh, within it. But yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense. And, and I think that having React Native Skia helps close that gap as well. Because without this, you can't really do what we're talking about. Like you can... You can kind of you can get close maybe with like reanimated and you can do some things like that. There's definitely some cool stuff there, but being able to reach right down to Skia itself and be able to do these renderings in 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 you know sixty in native uh, frame frame rates is just just mind boggling. It's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically what we're thinking as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, bringing real two D drawing to uh, React Native is uh, is really on time. Yeah, and should should have been done for a long time uh, back, but I mean it's um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, by the way, um, Andrew says, "Did I hear Flutter?" I think that's Andrew who's given me some uh, feedback on Flutter. He's actually a React Native and Flutter developer, so he knows quite a bit about that. Um, Chan Man says, "Are there any projects building on top of React Native Skia that have your attention?" And William actually ans uh, answered, and <laughs> he said, "I'm here for the tea." By the way. Uh, William did, uh, but he says um, we've seen that some that really caught our attention, but they're not public yet. Um, Chan Man then says the the day my boss tells me there's a deadline for upgrading React Native, I'm handing in my notice. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Uh, William says, "Well put, Jamin." I assume that he's talking about when I was talking about like Flutter, like the 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 advantage of React Native. Hard to imagine that JavaScript, which has won all the battles, would somehow lose this one. <laughs> it's true. Um, Philip says the upgrade helper is a big help. The biggest problem is the Xcode project file would be great to have a change this list for that file. I think in a lot of cases, I ignore that. Like I don't do anything to the Xcode project file. I don't know too many times where it's backfired on me. Um, what Flutter does though, you can say Flutter create from their CLI in your actual app and it will just spin up a new app with all of your changes applied to it, which is pretty amazing. And I really yeah, and want something like that for React Native. That's something we should have had as well in React Native. I, I remember agree. when we were using Samarine to build apps, yeah. uh, they always recreated the, the project files. So they were built from scratch every time every from time. the definition files. And I was like, oh, can you please give me a static file that I can edit so I can make my changes? And then I got <laughs> to React Native was, and was so happy about being yeah. able to do that until I got into upgrading. Until upgrading, so, yeah. Yeah. That's the downside. But I agree. It's a, it's a very good point of having a tool, uh, having the CLI supporting uh, a thing like that. That's That would be really, really yeah. awesome. I know for a fact that Meta, one of Meta's um, priorities is uh, um, making the upgrade process much easier. Um, we've had some discussions with them about what, what could happen there. Because we have Ignite, and Ignite also has, it's a boilerplate on top of React Native, and it also has, um, you know, like like there's some upgrading stuff that we have to deal with too. A lot of times we're like, well, just 
create your ignite project once and then kind of move on you know it's fine like you don't have to stay with you know keep up to date with what we're doing but a lot of people actually see that you know because ignite like a lot of the the changes that we make are due to learnings we've had from our client projects and so you know hey we just fixed a bug we're bringing it back to ignite and they want they want that same thing so there's actually an upgrade helper very similar to the react native upgrade helper where um nicholas uh, soderstrom uh, actually spins up you know the two the two apps and can give you a diff of the two and so you can check that out in our documentation um but it's not an it's not an like automatic thing but you can at least see the diffs between the different versions that we that we put out there um let's see here uh danny says to me typescript makes the editing part of development really nice for react native i think dart has a lot of the same things but dart is definitely more java-esque it's less um less javascript more java um danny says expo does the rest well that's true and by the way uh this is uh coming to expo as well so uh at some point you're going to be able to do uh skia and expo um yeah and just to, to, yeah. to mention since you're mentioning expo when yeah. we're talking about bad developer experience i think expo is the guys and girls doing uh, helping us yeah. out because they yeah that's an awesome experience so uh, i know yep, yep. so yep. so that's something to to keep an eye on that's very true. Uh, Danny says, still with Expo development clients, I get into trouble sometimes. I always ignore the Xcode project file and let it auto-generate. That makes sense. Uh, Mark says, I'm working on an app for a client that's going to be public in a few days using React Native Skia for smooth animated graphs and avatars. That's awesome. Uh, and then he says, uh, and I can't thank William and Christian enough for all of their help on this. Big time, huge, huge kudos to both of you for all of your work on that. Is it primarily you two or is there anybody else uh, kind of on the core team there? So the core team is William and me, but mm -hmm. we have had a lot of contributors uh, providing the requests and, and suggestions and fixes. So yeah. it's starting to be more than the two of us. Yeah, absolutely. But we, we are still kind of in, in, in alpha mode where we are changing things and yeah. discussing and introducing new stuff. So it's hard to grow the team right now. Yeah. But we have discussed with Shopify uh, about expanding the team. Mm -hmm. so that we will can maybe leverage some of their developers helping yeah. us out with uh, with some of the things that we're doing. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, during the sort of like initial roughing it out and kind of making it work phase, there's it's a little easier to move with a, a smaller team um, and easier to make decisions and stuff. But as more adoption happens across the community, then you're going to need obviously more perspectives on, on what's happening out there. Totally makes sense. Um, Chanman says, uh, are there features left in React Native Skia to be implemented before you want to move to beta? Yes, uh, it's mainly the last uh, parts of the API from Canvas Kits. It's now, I think, the paragraph builder that we talked about uh, when we looked at the Skia demos, uh, where you can build advanced, do advanced text rendering, which is something that is a bit hard to do in, um, in uh, React Native uh, now. Uh, and also, of course, we want to bring this to React Native Web so that we cover the three major platforms for uh, React Native, uh, iOS, Android, and Web. And yeah. of course, we would expect that someone would suggest uh, Mac OS and Windows as well. And, uh, but for beta, it's basically React Native Web uh, and the Paragraph stuff, which is kind of our plan. By the way, I have to show you something that I did uh, while we were not looking at the screen here. I just have to. Um, so I wanted I wanted it to go on both sides. Uh, and it's, it's not perfect, but it's doing start and end. And I just did a, a reverse loop. So I used a derived value. And I just did 1 minus w uh, for the, the loop value. So I can simply reverse the loop. Now, obviously, it's not perfect because they pass each other. So that's not good. But like you'd have to like mess with that a little bit. but. That's pretty cool. I just had this little idea like, oh, it'd be cool if both both sides uh, animated. How do I yeah. do that? Well, use the right value. Boom. <laughs> to your rescue. <laughs> yeah. Well, we actually had a lot of discussions about the uh, these values and, and how to use yeah. them. But when we finally landed on the derived value thing, which is inspired by how React Nate, uh, Reanimated does, yes. uh, partly does some of the same things, we were kind of totally sold on the idea. It's incredible. So, uh, yeah. It's incredible. It's such a like, like a basic tool, but you know what? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I guess you know. Um, I'm one of the, or I guess I'm the 
primary maintainer of a uh, state management library, Mob X State Tree. And um, there's a concept of views in there, which are derived values, and it monitors the, um, you know, the, the primary values. And when those change, it will re-render anything that's consuming the views, which is sort of a similar idea here. And I mm -hmm. love views, like derived values, because they are just, yeah. they're just so powerful and, um, and so key to, to programming. Uh, you have to be able to do this. Uh, I, it just, it's super, like, super clean. Like, yeah, I, I get that. Like, I'd have to do a little more work here, but not much. Like, I could, I could easily derive half of a loop. In fact, let me do that. Let me let me fix it right now while while, while I'm here. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Half loop, all right? Equals use derived value. And I think, uh, so GitHub Copilot already understands how to write this. So I said half loop and it automatically did the W divided by two, which is amazing. And then I can just throw half loop in here, I assume. And I can reverse that so I can derive a derived value. And... Um, Let's see, we're gonna start with a half loop and do a end of, okay, yeah. Now it starts in the middle and it kind of goes in and out from the sides. So yeah, <laughs> I yeah. derived a derived value. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point of this and that you can build kind of complex trees of, uh, yeah. of uh, derivations from, from the root value. That was course, one more it line. Can be, you can, yeah. yeah, you could optimize this and, and contain everything within the reverse loop, but then yeah. uh, this works really fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we've inspired some of you all to uh, to check out React Native Skia. Obviously not ready for maybe like, you know, pushing directly to millions of users necessarily, but, you know, give it a try. See what see what you think. Um, where can people find you, Christian? And uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm blanking for a second. Uh, William, sorry. About that, William. Uh, where can people find you to give feedback, and what sort of feedback are you looking for right now? Yeah, so so basically, we have had so many nice uh, comments and issues, and people have been so nice with us uh, in the repository. So if you go to uh, at Shopify uh, and at GitHub, uh, sorry, let me start again. <laughs> go to GitHub, and uh, the repository is at Shopify slash React Native Skia. It's the same as you see on the top on the import in the file. We could probably paste it in as a link in the yeah, description yeah. or something. Yep, we'll do so that. So that's the repository. So go there, try this, test this out, and give us feedback. And uh, if you want to help, uh, mm -hmm. we are accepting um, pull requests as well. So uh, should be yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Open for everyone. Yeah, very cool. Well, thanks so much for. Uh, both your work on this uh, and for coming on the stream, Christian, really appreciate it. This was super fun. This was like way more fun than I even expected it to be. And I thought it was going to be fun. Um, we're going to have to have you back on. So I'm definitely going to have uh, Derek help us find a, a good time where we can do this again. Um, maybe there's some more advanced things we can play with. I know there's tons more capability here. Um, you know, as, especially as things go along, certainly when you hit beta, certainly when you hit 1.0, I want to have you on to, to chat about this. Maybe we could have you on React Native Radio or a podcast as well, you and or William, and um, just continue to promote this because it's really some really great work. Thanks, really appreciate those kind words, Jamin. Uh, it's been a really huge fun being yeah. at the stream as well. So uh, I could probably just continue now because this, this is so fun. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I love I love nerding out with with fellow uh, fellow geeks yeah. about this stuff. It's it's the best. Uh, thanks everybody in chat, by the way, we had a great, uh, lively chat, people asking some really good questions all the way throughout this. I missed some stuff. I realize, sorry about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Philip says such a great stream and library. Looking forward to try it. Thanks a lot. Derek says, thanks for an exciting episode. Christian, let's get you booked for another session. Uh, so he's gonna, he's gonna get you on there. And then, um, Chan Man did have a question about web. Uh, is it as straightforward to implement as React Native Skia is? Yeah, so what, what we're hoping is to be able to leverage uh, the Canvas Kit WebAssembly mm -hmm. and include that and use that. So yeah. that's why we have the same API. We don't know yet how hard it will be, but we know it should be possible in some way. And we're getting some good help from, from people over at Expo that knows a lot about these mm -hmm. things. So yeah. hopefully it will be smooth sailing. But we can, Fantastic. I don't really know. 
Daniel uh, has, uh, thanks for the follow. And Philip, thanks for the follow, everybody. Uh, and I will be back online on Monday. I am not here next Friday. There was supposed to be a guest next Friday, a really exciting guest as well. Uh, however, I will not be here on uh, next Friday because it's my brother's wedding. So I will be out. Um, and there's going to actually be some amount of time where I'm going to be off. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to have people like Christian, hopefully back and some others, uh, some really cool stuff on the way. Uh, but I will be here Monday to do just probably catching up on some open source and stuff, hanging out. Thank you all for coming and we'll see you all next time. Have a great weekend.